Good evening. I'm glad to say we are on the 13th of October 2021. Because I'm in arrears with the readings, I'd written them all in the book already. And I sorted it out, but I'd written it down and now I'm on the correct day. So it was the second recording that I had a little bit of confusion, but they're, they're there because they follow one another, don't they? So I like to make sure that you've got them all there to hear the readings in case you've missed them the same as I. I hadn't, have never missed them because I hear masses every day as while I'm typing up documents to, to record and the Bible and things like that. So I have heard them, but sometimes at my age I lose track <laughs> of what I've done and what I haven't. I do keep records, but they need to be maintained. So I'm now reading for Wednesday, 28th week in Ordinary Time, Year 1. Wednesday the 13th of October 2021. The readings will be a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans chapter 2, 1 to 11. The responsorial Psalm to Psalm 61 of verses 2 to 3, 6, 7, 9. The response is verse 13. Lord, you repay each man according to his deeds and the gospel will be according to Luke chapter 11 verses 42 to 46 so we will begin now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen a reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Romans no matter who you are, if you pass judgment, you have no excuse. In judging others, you condemn yourself. Since you behave no differently from those you judge. We know that God condemns that sort of behavior impartially. And when you judge those who behave like this, while you are doing exactly the same, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or are you abusing his abundant goodness, patience and tolerance, not realizing that this goodness of God is meant to lead you to repentance? Your stubborn refusal to repent is only adding to the anger God will have towards you on that day of anger when his just judgments will be made known. He will repay each one as his works deserve. For those who sought renown and honour and immortality by always doing good there will be eternal life for the unsubmissive who refuse to take truth for their guide and took depravity instead there will be anger and fury pain and suffering Will come to every human being who employs himself in evil. Jews first, but Greeks as well. Renown, honour and peace 
will come to everyone who does good. Jews first, but Greeks as well. God has no favourites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm 61 The Response Lord, you repay each man according to his deeds. Lord, you repay each man according to his deeds. In God alone is my soul at rest. My help comes from him. He alone is my rock my stronghold, my fortress, I stand firm. Lord, you repay each man according to his deeds. Take refuge in God, all you people. Trust him at all times. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Lord, you repay each man according to his deeds. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said to the Pharisees, Alas for you Pharisees, you who pay your tithe of mint and rue and all sorts of garden herbs and overlook justice and the love of God. These you should have practised without leaving the others undone. Alas for you, Pharisees, who like taking the seats of honour in the synagogues and being greeted obsequiously in the market squares. Alas for you, because you are like the unmarked tombs that men walk on without knowing it. A lawyer then spoke up. Master, he said, when you speak like this, you insult us too. Alas for you lawyers also, he replied, because you load on men burdens that are unendurable, burdens that you yourselves do not move a finger to lift the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I am going to read something very important for English people in Great Britain. This was sent to me today, Wednesday 13th of October at 10.17 from Caroline Farrow, Citizen Go. Janet, people who want to legalise assisted suicide in UK often talk about it as a swift, merciful and painless end to suffering. This is certainly how we see it presented in the media, which no, I never watch. What I learned recently horrified me. 
far from being a peaceful release, it turns out that euthanized patients often suffer the same excruciating and protracted death that they were hoping to avoid. In many places where euthanasia is legal, America, the same dangerous combination of barbiturates used to kill prisoners on death row in the US is used on patients who wish to end their lives. One patient, a man from Oregon, woke up 65 hours after taking the lethal combination of drugs meant to kill him and he asked what happened. He then declined another attempt to die and then he passed naturally a few weeks later. In other instances patients have become concerned and restless walking around the room and wondering what is happening. In Washington State, where euthanasia is legal, a third of patients were recorded as experiencing seizures, vomiting, asphyxia, and taking over 30 hours to die. A medic who gave evidence to Parliament last month described how a nurse had put a plastic bag over the head of one patient because they were not dying. I am sorry to give you these distressing details but we need to dispel this myth that assisted suicide is a dignified way to die. We do not want to see this horror on the NHS in the UK. Therefore, we need to get as many signatures as possible before Baroness Meacher's assisted suicide bill is debated in the Lords on the 22nd of October. So please add your name if you have access to that petition running with Citizen Go. The United Kingdom is a world leader when it comes to palliative care. Let us keep it that way. Um, I will read this page as well. Dear Janet, a new campaign to legalise euthanasia is gathering pace. The assisted suicide lobby has brought forward a bill presented by Baroness Meacher, which receives its second reading in the House of Lords on the 22nd of October. If euthanasia is introduced in the United Kingdom, there can be no turning back. This will set a legal precedent allowing doctors to kill patients. Please sign the petition telling Boris Johnson and his government not to legalise assisted suicide. Sign the petition if you can. While the bill still has a number of stages to go through before it eventually reaches the House of Commons, we need to make our voices heard now. Boris Johnson's government must understand that introducing euthanasia into the United Kingdom would be deeply unpopular dangerous and a regressive move. Please sign the petition telling Boris Johnson and his secretaries of state not to legalise assisted suicide. 
and I beg you all to write to your MPs as I will mine. I haven't writ written to him about this, but many other things I have. Assisted suicide authorises doctors to deliberately bring about the deaths of other people. We simply cannot allow this to happen. Once we enshrine the principle of allowing doctors to intentionally kill their patients into law, it will be impossible to go back. This will set a legal precedent because it will establish a principle whereby euthanasia is considered to be in a patient's best interests. I leave it up to you now. I've done all I can with this subject and I'm not very happy with the subject either. I'm against it. I'm against it for the fact of my faith. God gives life and God takes life. Jesus Christ suffered for us. He died on the cross for us and our salvation. And the plan of God is, 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 includes suffering. But when we go to heaven, there is no suffering. But it's par for the course because of the sin of Adam and Eve, which is not recognised by non-believers. So we in our faith know it's part of the punishment. But my mother had a most dignified death. She had pneumonia. It was diagnosed on the Friday. I arrived at the hospital Saturday evening. She was very happy to see me. She didn't look like she was dying. I don't think she even felt. Who knows what mum had all her wits about her. Her last three words she shouted at me was, the, th the last word she ever said in this world was, Janet, take this mask off. And then she gave me the most beautiful smile she'd ever given me ever in my life, <laughs> nearly 75 years. And she lay back against the pillow, closed her eyes, and she died. What a beautiful death. I had been praying there from Friday night to Monday, 11th of the 11th, 2019, around 4 p.m. Yes, everyone should have a beautiful death like that. Not to take drugs that make you suffer and you, they don't kill you and they don't work, not all the time. Some people they would grant you, but none of those people that survived through that time and told the story wish they'd done it and they didn't want to do it again because <laughs> it didn't work for them. But what a painful experience for them. Just think about that. Anyway, it's your choice. I've given you the information. God bless you all. I'll be praying for you. And may God send you his peace and blessings and wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Thank you once again for listening. <laughs>